Hello YouTube, XCT here. In the first video we found a config XML that contained an encrypted or hashed password and we also found the program securepass.exe which generated this. Um, now we are going to reverse engineer the program to find out if we can somehow obtain the clear text password again and afterwards we'll use manage engine for lateral movement. Alright, let's start. So I'm here on my Windows VM and I have this securepass.exe here, which we grabbed from the machine in the beginning. So if I give this like a password here, like test, um, we get the string here. And if I run it again, we get a completely different string. Um, but if I do it fast, you can see that sometimes the strings are the same, right? So this seems like there's some time-based component here that's maybe changing every second because I did it fast now, got three times the same value, but then another value shortly after. So it's likely this is somehow time-based. All right, and if you remember from the machine, we basically got this value that we want to, I guess, decrypt if it's decryptable to get the clear text password here. Okay, so to begin, let's just analyze this thing in either. And then let's go to the main function here. And then I'm just going to debug it to save us some time. Normally you would just do some, some static reversing before you debug it, I guess. But in this case, yeah, I want to save us some time. So we go to process options and give it the um, password parameter here as well, which we just did. Then we set a breakpoint on main. And then we can hit play here and actually debug the binary. All right, so I'm going to debug this and mention if something interesting happens. Let's go. Just some argument handling. All right, there's an interesting function call here. We are calling this unknown lib name, but in the hover you can see it's based on time. And if we like step over it and just get return value here, then paste it into calc, we can see in a decimal notation that this is actually a timestamp. So this is just getting the Unix timestamp, right? And then it's passing this to srunt, which is seeding the random function. So it's trying to generate a random value and it's seeded with the time. And there's actually a short loop here that's generating a random value, which is hex 10 long, so 16 characters. Let's actually write that down. Um, random. 16 byte value based on time. That's like the first thing this is doing. Then let's continue just doing some formatting here. It's not too interesting, but it's again doing it for every byte. And then we get to an interesting point, which is this one. Um, we can see here the format string, which looks suspiciously like our output, right? SP is what we have uh, as well in the and the config XML we got, right? So here we have SP as well and then some numbers. So this is how this is generated. This here is probably just printing it or doing like an S printf. So this function must actually do whatever is done to the input. So let's actually step into that one. Then let's step through this and see if we can like identify anything interesting. So let's skip the basic block here. Um, this has a lot of floating point operations, so maybe some cryptography stuff is going on here. Let's just continue for now and see if we can identify something. Um, this looks interesting, right? There's a short loop here, um, which is basically taking bytes from REX, which is our input password in clear text. Um, you see, I already stepped over it, so it's basically now pointing to the S of test. It's just taking this, XORing it with X42. Um, so basically we know now that the second step here is um, basically input password x or 42. All right, so there are some like obfuscation going on. Let's continue. And then we get to this block. Um, let's actually see where this is pointing. This here is still our clear text password just xort, right? So this is doing another operation on this now xort input password. And what it's basically doing is just swapping the characters. So you see this was already finished here. Let's see if this is still like pointing there. 
Yeah, so now you can basically see it swapped, right? If you still remember how it looked before, it was exactly the other way around. So let's write that here. Reverse string. So we just need now like the next step and we're basically already done with the reversing. Unfortunately, the next step is kind of difficult to find. So let's just go along here. There's a function here. Let's peek into it. All right, this looks complicated, right? Let's still try to like step into it. So what's happening here? It's difficult to see. Um, it's just moving a lot of values like into memory. What kind of values are these? Well, some bytes, right? It's hard to tell what it really means. Um, but maybe it's useful to like, let's at least save the first few ones here. So we have 86 and then for 23 and then five. All right, let's just um, save this for now. Obviously you can like store the whole thing if you're interested in that. I'm just going to save some time here for us. So how many values are these? These are 16 values, right? And you can also like, I don't even have to count. You can see that here in the, in the offset from the register, right? So 16 by value. So we have some static data, which is 16 bytes here, and we have a 16 byte IV. So this kind of already suggests that there are some kind of crypto IV and maybe a 16 byte key. I'm just, just an assumption at this point that this could be the key, um, but it's not that far fetched, I think. And then if you like continue here, um, at least for me, it's hard to understand what's going on, right? would take a lot of time to like understand. And they, are, they all look so similar here. I, I don't know, this is not really my thing. Um, so what else can we do? So there's a tool here called PEID and this can like identify certain cryptography if it's used in a binary. And we're going to use that to help us. Loading secure pass here. It's telling us it's not a valid PE file, but it doesn't really matter because if we go here to plugins and then to crypto analyzer, it basically is telling us that this is AES. This is interesting because AES kind of matches what we've seen, right? We have these two 16 byte values, which could be like an IV and a key. So this would kind of fit AES, but it's not like printing a key or something. It's just making an assumption based on constants it sees in the binary. So something else we can do is first let's just go to the point again where we just have been like we go in here and then we step until the return and at this point in memory it should have like all the aes stuff if it's really aes right like the key and the key scheduling and all of that and there's a tool which can basically analyze the memory of a process to find these and this is called aes finder and it's linked in the VanLab field manual if you want to get it without like compiling it. It's a bit tricky because it's old. Um, let's go to tools and then AS Finder and then give it a process name. And this is still running, right? It's just paused in the debugger, but it's still a running process so we can analyze its memory. And this like extremely fast found the actual AES key based on like the information stored in memory, which is not just these bytes, that would be hard to find, right? It's like all the bytes that are involved in, this, in the key scheduling and all of that. And just copy this here. If you like compare this to the few bytes I saved here, you can see it's the same, right? So this is really the key. And we saw the key while debugging already. And at this point, we have like all the information we need to decrypt this. So let's do Cyberchef. Um, I pasted the key here because now it's in reverse, right? The first step is AES decrypt. We have the key 
and we have the IV. Where did I get the IV from? Well, in the config XML, we already saw it's basically like SP percent S percent S, right? And if we take this, and we already know they're both 16 bytes, so we can basically, let's see, here should be the half. Yeah, we can basically split it into halves, and the first one is the IV. I put this one here. And the second one is the encrypted string. I put that one here, or the encrypted bytes, let's call it that. And we decrypt it with the key that we found now where two ways in the binary. And then we get basically this. We still have to reverse this. So it looks like this. And then we have to XOR it with 42. So just like undo everything we've written down here in our notes. And we get the password of the account. All right, so that's it for the reversing side. I know it was pretty fast, but I hope you got some, some idea on how you could solve this. And now let's actually try to use the password. All right, so now we got the password and now I wanna try to log into Manage Engine. This is just one of the services that's running on the network. And we saw earlier, like in Active Directory, that this is the account that's like the admin account for Manage Engine. So let's, let's try it. First, I think it makes sense to try SVCME because that's the username in the XML, um, but it's not working. So another thing we can try is admin because that's the default um, admin account on Manage Engine. And if we try this, we can see that it works, but we need two-factor authentication. So we're not quite yet done. If we go back to Chasm here, I'm just logged in with some, some user that has no permissions. We can see that KeyPass exists on the desktop. And inside the um, share IT here under Vault, there's actually a KeyPass file. So if we open this and also use the same password we just decrypted here, it actually unlocks. Um, and we got one entry here. Well, let's um, maybe just go to like edit here to show the password. Um, you can see it's just storing the exact same password again, right? So this is not helping. Uh, we already have the password. And in fact, it was also the KeePass password. So it isn't really helping us. But this um, clock here means that there's an authenticator token basically included here. So we can go here, TOTP, and then we can do show TOTP, copy this, paste this here, and we can actually log in. And now we're inside Manage Engine. So what is the software doing? Well, it's kind of like managing your inventory, your endpoints. So if you wanna like deploy software or just have an overview, um, this is like a tool you can use. There's also like lots of other options, right? You can read it up yourself. Like it has some ransomware stuff, some mobile stuff, patch management and so on. And you can see this is just being like rolled out because only one machine is connected here. Um, let's try to find out which machine this is. So maybe inventory is a good point to start. And then computers. And we can see that there's one uh, computer here and there's a user currently logged in, which is running Windows 10 Professional. So what happens if we go here? We get some, some info, um, some software, hardware info, missing patches. Um, yeah, lots of stuff. What else can we do? Well, there is actions here. And this is pretty interesting because on system, there are things like command prompt and PowerShell. So let's click PowerShell here. And we actually get PowerShell as system on the machine. So this is a way we can move laterally there and we can like get a beacon from here. Um, why does this working? Well, this thing here basically is the management server and on the workstation, there's a client running and the client is running with system permissions and connecting back to the server. So this is like um, basically like a C2 software, but like for legit reasons. All right, so we are system and because Kali is logged in, we can also be Kali if we want to. Can just click here and we are Kali. So we have one new user and we have system on the machine. So at this point we can like wrap the flag on the box and then continue to see what we can do. So that's it for this time. In the next video, we are going to see if we can somehow attack the logged in user 
and then further proceed through the network. Thank you for watching and see you next time.